Corruption is worse than prostitution. The latter might endanger the morals of an individual. The former invariably endangers the morals of the entire country. Good evening and welcome. This is Face the Nation. Our topic of discussion today revolves around a few words. Corruption, morals, party politics and also good governance. Has party politics derailed Sri Lanka's forward march? Has party politics derailed our drive towards good governance? If so, what is the responsibility of the civil society? What is the responsibility of the judiciary, the media and also the people of this nation? To discuss all this and more, we have invited several individuals to our studios uh, this evening. Joining us uh, on the show tonight is Attorney at Law, Mr. Maitri Gunavatna, Competent Authority of the Lanka Mineral Sands Limited organization. Nice to have you on board, uh, Mr. Gunavatna. Thank Devla. you for the invitation. Also joining us this evening is uh, Mr. Asoka Begunavatna, Chairman and CEO of the Strategic Enterprise Management Agency. Nice to have you on board as well, Mr. Begunavatna, after some time. Uh, we will be also joined by um, Mr. Kesar Lal Gunasekara, former member of parliament of the United People's Freedom Alliance and also who held the post of uh, Deputy Mayor of the Dehavala Mount Lebanon Municipal Council as well. So let's start off tonight's show with uh, Mr. Asur Kabbegunavardhana, Chairman CEO of the Strategic, Strategic Enterprise Management Agency. Uh, Mr. Kabbegunavardhana, what is really happening right now? My question to you is very simple. Who is in charge and who is in control right now of the country? Well, uh, it's a good question and also the questions you raised earlier, it's very important for us to recognize what's, uh, the, what's happening and what's uh, each one's role. So uh, actually now we are after two years of the uh, previous general election of which there was no clear majority in the parliament for the, uh, none of these major parties. And then the discussions were there to form uh, an uh, national government. And there, uh, the two major parties, SLFP and UNP, signed an uh, MOU uh, regarding uh, what should happen during the next two years. The MOU was for a two-year period. And now uh, we have come to the end of that period. So uh, during that period, if we are to understand who took the decisions and who implemented it, yes, it's true that the, Prime, uh, the president uh, still holds the executive powers to a greater extent, but the uh, majority in the parliament, uh, the major party was the UNP, but they did not have the simple majority, but the formation of the government consisted of the SLFP and UMP out of which SLFP was not together, part of that worked as a joint uh, opposition and it, which was allowed by the uh, leader of the SLFP and only a fraction joined the government. So within the uh, government, within the parliament, uh, the uh, number one was the UNP led by the Prime Minister and the number three was the uh, President's uh, uh, fraction in the SLFP. So within that framework, I believe the president allowed the prime minister uh, to run the uh, government and to uh, fulfill the requirements uh, mentioned in the MOU. But since then what we have witnessed is that uh, there was no un clear understanding, a firm program between the two major parties, though the uh, MOU was there because that was a uh, basic document uh, on which they had to discuss in detail and come to a consensus before implementing a particular activity. Uh, How Mr. Bikmurtha, but you are still not uh, answering my question. Yes. Who is in control and who is in charge? Well, at present, uh, it's, it's the uh, Prime Minister who is leading the uh, government right now and the, uh, the framework or the rules of the game was determined by the uh, uh, president, I believe. That's the that's the setup we had. But now, as we have come to the end of the uh, the uh, period of the understanding, now the president, in certain instances, he, he took firm decisions and reversed certain things or uh, made a step forward. But for the next year, I believe now the 
the national government has come to a dead end. Right now, it's up to the president to decide what should happen during the next three years. Uh, Mr. Abhikar Maradona, you speak with a lot of pessimism uh, as far as the future of this government is concerned. The next two and a half years, this government is going to be in power. Do you think there will be a major upset within the coalition government in the next few months? Because the president has said that, wait and give me time until the 31st of December this yes. year. And it's very clear that he's waiting until the investigations in the bond scam is over and also the budget is over by the end of this uh, year as well for the next year. So what is really happening? Yeah, uh, uh, the president has a role to play, but at the end of the day, it should be the uh, simple majority obtaining uh, party will uh, have the uh, governing powers for the next uh, two and a half to three years. So there are three possible scenarios. Firstly, whether the two major parties at least now can they come to a consensus regarding what should happen during the next two and a half years because they fail to have a firm program with an understanding between the two major parties re uh, regarding the core issues that were discussed very recently. So that's the first option. There will be an attempt uh, to, uh, have a, to have an another understanding. But beyond that, there are other discussions of forming a government by the uh, United National Party, which is uh, likely to be a scenario. Because uh, if they can get uh, the simple majority in the parliament, as they already have a fair share in the... 106 uh, uh, members of parliament. Yeah. And uh, if uh, there's a possibility that they can form their own government and govern the next few years. And there's another scenario that uh, whether the uh, uh, SLFP can uh, come to a get, come together and, and our understanding and win some of the others and form a government. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Asoka Bekunwaradhan, Chairman, CEO of the Strategic Enterprise Management Agency. I now move my attention to um, the very famous attorney at law, uh, Mr. Maitri Gunaratna, competent authority of the Lanka Mineral Sands Limited. Uh, Mr. Gunaratna, when you really saw what happened over the last uh, few months uh, within the government itself, we saw resignations of many individuals uh, from their positions. Uh, one of them was uh, Ravi Karunayaka. We saw Tilak Marpan resigning uh, from his portfolio as well. Uh, then we saw several individuals resigning from their positions uh, who, are, who are holding high ranks uh, within the government. We saw the chairman of the CEB uh, resigning uh, a few months ago. Uh, we saw Upal Jai Surya, the chairman of the BOI, also tendering his resignation. We also saw you resigning. I, I, I didn't resign, I was kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> however, uh, however, the way, anyway, the way, the way like you like to describe it, um, and you also uh, uh, was removed from the position. And then now you start thinking, are we setting a culture right now about these resignations and not really acting or punishing those who are really corrupt? Uh, we see people resigning. And being given post, example, Tilak Marapana, uh, he resigned uh, over the avant-garde issue. Now, he is a powerful minister. He is a minister of foreign affairs and development assignments. We saw other individuals as well. Let, let, let's take you for an example. You were kicked out, and now you are the competent authority of Lanka Mineral Sands Limited. Is this a culture that we are looking at at the moment, or what? What must we really do? Is this the right culture that we are setting? The right precedent? It's a mind-boggling question. So I will, give, I will let you give me a little time to answer this. I will give you three minutes, uh, yeah. Mr. Kunata. Uh, now, having promised good governance, uh, they had to, this government has to live up to it. And especially when it, as this government came into power, the avant-garde issue came into light. That was a major bone of contention and it transpired that several ministers in this government were involved and helped and even advised avant-garde legally and in other ways to come out of their problem. So in fairness to Mr. Tilak Marapana, when his name came out and he, he was he was maybe confronted or he was he knew about this whole thing that it was coming out. 
he tendered his resignation and set a I, th- I would say a good trend which had never happened before so visavi good governance well there it started i mean uh, from from what it was uh, to what it is today uh, it, 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 i would say the process of good governance has started because at least now you get ministers of state summoned before t- uh, tribunals or b- bodies inquiring bodies and uh, they are being questioned and uh, the public is aware proceedings are quite transparent and resignations are being called upon now two years ago you would have never seen this thing kind of this kind of thing happening so the 2015 january 8 the change the yapal ne change i i feel is slowly slowly kicking in slowly slowly kicking in but on the other hand there are the casualties now as you, as you said i have resigned i never resigned i was heading the lanka coal company and when when we were fighting to get the coal at 15 dollars less when that was that was the we had shown that you could have buy, bought it at 15 dollars less they went and bought it at 15 dollars more so when when i stood against that i was shown the door and i was i was thrown out and subsequently i mean his excellency the president uh, knew that i was completely uh, you know faultless and in fact i have got the supreme court judgment uh, given by the former chief justice where he had said that if at all the cap should have acted according to what i have uh, pointed out in my letter so i have been totally exonerated and i have been uh, the whole letter has been quoted in the judgment so there were we also have been casualties because we were fighting for the right thing to happen so as a, as a, as a result of that uh, i mean these resignations this new culture is slowly slowly coming in samir uh, 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 mr guratna uh, i want to direct your attention to one of the statements that was made by uh, field marshal south fonseca some time ago uh, over an individual of the government who is a strong minister it's no secret uh, minister vijayadas rajapaksha um i recollect uh, when minister vijayadas rajapaksha said that he did not have any connection uh, with uh, the avant guard um on at that time who was nisanga senadipati uh, field marshal sarth fonseca held a media briefing showed pictures yeah. and said uh, he had connections yes. and it is very evident that they were parting in disneyland in, in the usa yes the question is very simple why not punish these individuals uh, and why not take action against them uh, let's take Ravi Karunaikar's resignation that happened recently. You cannot just say that uh, the resignation is good enough. Uh, this is the way to go forward. Uh, the UNP is doing the right thing. We are setting the right precedents, so on and so forth. Firstly, the government should realize not to appoint individuals who are corrupt to positions that hold accountable. Would there for be the anyone of Sri Lanka? Would there be anyone in the parliament to appoint for those positions then? So that that's that's my question to you. <laughs> so the point is uh, Samir now uh, for instance uh, as you as you pointed out uh, pr- minister Vijayadas Rajapaksa's connection with Nisanka Sena Adipati now technically having denied any connection with them it is at that point they should have called for his resignation. Now something has gone wrong internally and they are and they are gunning for him but actually that way mr tilak marapar did the did the most honorable thing of resigning at that time right now even even in, to that same extent uh, minister vijayadas rajapaksa also was involved so the unp or this present government should have asked for his resignation at that time i can see them saying that they are going is he going to continue from tomorrow onwards or is he, this is this is last day i mean these 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 have been prolonged for almost 2 years right and they are calling for his resignation now which which i mean is uncalled for now he has been he has been doing his he has been doing his work and there is a difference of opinion between some of the unp members and some of the, of him 
but it is at that time they should have called for his resignation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Maitri Gunratna, Combat Authority of the Lanka Mineral Sands Limited. He's also an attorney at law, was also uh, a former prov provincial council of the Southern uh, Provincial Council as well. A very quick question to you. Your shirt does not resemble the party that you're representing today, uh, <laughs> does it, uh, uh, Mr. Gunratna? What, 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 what party, party do you say? It says green, green, so you should know better than me which party it resembles uh, in, in Sri Lanka. <laughs> He has a large stock. Okay, so <laughs> let me be very precise. The party that you once represented in the Southern Provincial Council, no, it is not the UNP. Yeah, I was. I was uh, yes. So the part, the color of your shirt resembles that political party, Mr. Gunratna. For yeah, information, yeah, so it was I'm, green. I'm in heart. I'm still green. <laughs> Uh, we now move uh, to um, uh, Mr. Kesar Rahal Gunasekar, a former member of Parliament of the United People's Freedom Alliance and also uh, the Deputy Mayor, the former Deputy Mayor of the uh, Devil Mount Levy Municipal Council. Uh, Mr. Gunasekar, nice to have you on board today on the show. Sorry uh, for the Firstly, delay. Uh, no, that's okay. Uh, you're right on time. Uh, that's the most important thing. Uh, Mr. Gunasekar, uh, the question is very simple. Are we seeing good governance right now or are we seeing a government that is riddled uh, with corruption. Your time starts now. Well, we are seeing good governance. As I said at a previous program as well, you will not be able to see good governance in one, two, three years. It will take a long time. But uh, we are seeing uh, definitely the setting of good governance. And uh, you say the government is riddled with uh, allegations, etc. Well, in a, in, a, in a setup of this nature, you will always have allegations. You got to understand that uh, if you take the composition of parliament, roughly about 70 to 80 percent of the members have come back again. It's not an easy exercise to bring in good governance overnight. In that context, the government also will have allegations, but um, they have to pull through. They have to walk through this. It's not an easy exercise. It's difficult, but you have to go through it. When you say go through this difficult exercise at present, is this what the people really expected? The government to go through such a difficult exercise as you? Of course, it is for the people because if you in, if you bring in good governance then the beneficiaries are the, gum, are the people. The beneficiaries are the people. So you, it's, 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 as I said before, it's not an easy exercise. But you must go through with it to ensure that you instill uh, good governance, principles, policies, systems, all those have to come in. Uh, Mr. Gunasekar, you say people are the beneficiaries of good governance uh, and it takes time, two, two three, uh, sometimes even uh, more, more years than uh, this. Now, you are a politician. Uh, you've represented uh, the Mount Levin electorate uh, for many, many years. What is the mood like when you go and speak to your voters who voted you in uh, as a parliamentarian at one point and also as the deputy mayor of the Hill Municipal Council? Are they happy? Well, when you go to instill good governance, you have to understand it's not an easy exercise. No, no, my you'll question always, is very simple. Yeah, what is I'm the mood of the people like? I'm coming to that. It's not an easy exercise. And uh, invariably, you'll uh, realize that uh, the people do not like it because it, does not, it, it is not something that they have seen in the past. When you, when you bring in a system which has not been experienced in the past, always you'll have problems, you'll have teething problems and that is exactly what you see. Of course, if you speak to the majority of the people, maybe they are not happy about it. That's understandable. As, my, as far as I'm concerned, I understand it very well. But, uh, as I said, you must have the commitment to go through it. Mr. Gunasekar, you become a very a minority here because you act as a politician uh, and, and you represent the parliament uh, as well as um, uh, the council, they will, uh, they will mount the municipal council as well. But the majority of the people, uh, you say that people have to understand and that you've understood it really well. But would this take this government to the next step? There's a quote saying, you know, what got us here won't get us there. So what got this government here with X number of votes clearly is not going to help them to win 
another election, given the current scenario, isn't it? Yeah, but... And you can't say about good governance then, uh, when the election comes closer, you can't say you had to tight, tighten your belts, we did something great. You can't. The equation doesn't fit. That's the price you'll have to pay by trying to bring in good governance. And lose an election? I don't say it so. There is still two and a half years of time. I feel that the government uh, has not been strong enough in uh, advocating what they have been doing through the media. You need uh, strong advocacy uh, and the government to some degree have not done that properly. And uh, if, they, if they do a better job, I'm sure you can win over people. It's not a, it's not a difficult exercise. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kesar Gonsega, former member of parliament of the United People's Freedom Alliance. Uh, before I open the floor for questions from my journalists and quickly introducing, introducing them to you, uh, Mr. Gunrath, when I asked you the question about the color green, and is that the party that you represent, and you said, um, I don't know, I just uh, thought that I should bring this to light. Um, this is what we hear most today from politicians. I don't know, and I can't remember. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I'm just trying to draw a parallel to what politicians are saying, and I, you, you seem to be acting acting just like a typical politician here. <laughs> so let me introduce a uh, uh, journalist uh, very quickly this evening. Onto my immediate uh, left is Charita Fernando, and onto my far left is Nadim Majid. Uh, very far today, Nadim. To be very honest, it's, uh, I, I expect you to be onto my right today. Anyway, so let's open the floor. Let's start off. Gets back, <laughs> uh, so let's open the floor. Let's start off with Charita. Thank you, Shamir. Uh, Mr. Gunratha, you earlier mentioned a few minutes ago that uh, the former foreign minister, Mr. Ravi Karunanayaka, resigned when he knew that things, the climate was not uh, good. But don't you agree that it was because of the pressure that came from the media, from the civil society? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He was forced to step down, don't you agree? Oh, definitely, definitely. But the, my, my, my issue is, as I think I participated in your program in the morning, uh, News line. Uh, uh, Mr. Ravi Karunanayaka, uh, if you if you if you compare the compare what has happened, I mean now who is the who is the person who appointed this person, Arjuna Mahendran, to the to this position? Uh, why was he kept there? And then who when when during the first first hundred days, the first bond scam was exposed. Then what they did was they, they held a wishy-washy uh, inquiry and everything was clear and they said nothing is wrong with this and everything is tickety-boo. Right? And then thereafter who is the person who kept him, protected him and fought for him. Now these are the, these are the questions and these are the, uh, these are the issues that civil society and the media will have to be questioning because I would say uh, Mr. Avi Karunanayaka is the person who just licked off a little honey from the comb which was harvested. The honeycomb which was hanging on the tree was harvested by someone else. Ravi Karunanayaka was involved only in just going and taking a little honey which was left on the branch and, and using it for himself. But who are the people who are responsible for harvesting this honeycomb because it is the people's money. Billions and billions of rupees belonging to the people of the money belonging to the people of this country has been stolen. Mr. Gurunath, from what you know, yes. are these uh, concerns raised within the United National Party as to find out who the others responsible? No one will dare talk in the United National Party if you talk you out. So you mean to say that this is a party that is not living by the principles of democracy? Was trying to bring it is. It is furthest from the principles of democracy. We we were we were we were the best examples and the casualties of speaking the truth. Uh, Mr. Uh, Abhiguna, then I have a question for you. Now, uh, Minister Ravi Karanaka stepping down avoided a major <laughs> showdown between the president and the prime minister, right? But the evolving situation has developed to us uh, uh, to a point now that there's, there can be another no-confidence motion uh, being brought 
against uh, the justice minister. So this is yet another challenge uh, that the coalition uh, government is facing. And right now it looks like there's no direction for this government. Yes, what are I your agree. thoughts on this? Yeah, I agree with that point because uh, uh, if there is a direction then uh, they should have shown the way during the last two years. Uh, and uh, the uh, issues we are discussing right now happened even prior to the uh, general elections uh, uh, during the 100 days program. So uh, things are moving very slowly and there is no uh, consensus among the two major parties and not within the parties as well. So uh, I think all these are leading towards creating a bad reputation to the uh, national government, this so-called good governance. So uh, I don't think this will help anyway for the, uh, for the future of the uh, national government. So definitely uh, this is not the correct approach. Well, uh, we are just witnessing the things hap happened in the periphery. The core issues are not yet addressed. But beyond that, uh, I think the core issue is we cannot limit all those things to this particular good governance issues. That's only a one dimension of the story. There are a lot of other things that should happen in the country uh, beyond this uh, issue. So the government has failed in that respect to the resolve the issues in the education sector, in the health sector and also regarding uh, foreign trade. Uh, and the uh, the ports and other issues. So, uh, I mean, uh, only one dimension is the uh, good governance. Well, yes, uh, maybe it's time consuming, but if you cannot address the other issues simultaneously, then definitely the government will be in trouble. And uh, then no one will be worried about to discuss about good governance because they need to uh, address the core other issues that should be resolved immediately, urgent matters. Uh, Mr. Gunath, I have a, another question for you. Uh, now, we know that there were differences of uh, opinion between uh, Minister Vijay Das and some of the other ministers. It has been brewing. But um, the allegations that he was blocking some of the prosecutions of uh, members of the former regime uh, surfaced only after the resignation of uh, Minister Ravi Kaunanayaka. Why do you think that happened that way? No, no. I, I don't think that uh, that was that had anything to do with uh, Mr. Abhikaranayaka's resignation. I feel uh, two years have gone after the election. Or one year has gone after the general election. Two years. two years have gone after the general election. And after passing two years, none of the people who were said to have been corrupt have been brought into the legal system for any charges. Now, before that, before that, the, the government which promised good governance has given up, given in one casualty. So now there is a, there, 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 this, this whole, uh, the, the previous regime's corruption, I feel, has become still. But so so, but so they are, they are, that, is, that is why they are now trying to rekindle and bring this back. And now they are blaming the Attorney General's Department, they are blaming the Judiciary, they are blaming all and sundry without themselves. How much blame do you think uh, the Justice Minister, the minister should take? Uh, because uh, now if there are allegations that uh, none of the um, former members of the re previous regime, uh, that investigations were not you know, done properly against them. No, no, no. And how much, because he, he, he is the uh, Minister of Justice, right? No, no, the Minister of Justice has not got nothing to do with the investigations. Investigations are done by the CID or the Front Bureau or the police or the FCID or whatever the organization. So that does not come under the Justice Minister. So it is unfair to blame the Justice Minister because the investigation process is done by a different ministry. Then the Attorney General's Department is the other organization which after the investigation is done the files are sent to the Attorney General's Department for them to either whether uh, for either uh, for either for them to either prosecute or for them to discharge. So, I mean, if the Justice Minister can influence the Attorney General's Department, I mean, that's a sad indictment on the Attorney General's Department. It is a very sad indictment on the Attorney General and the Attorney General's Department because 
they are perceived to be independent organizations if if someone is saying that uh, minister vijaydas rajapaksa prevailed upon the attorney general's department stopped any indictment being uh, sent out i mean that is a very very sad indictment on the attorney general's department and the country going by the allegations against him do yeah. you think that a no confidence motion is warranted or do, do you think he deserves I, I i i i don't think a no confidence motion is warranted against mr vijaydas rajapaksa if there is a no confidence motion warranted it is warranted against the 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 person who is in charge of the police because the investigations were done by the police so there there are so many other people who have to take the blame not only him he is being i feel in this is instance i am not a great supporter of his but in this instance i feel he is being uh, sidelined and he is being singled out and hunted mr gunasekar i have a question for you uh, we see a lot of political wrangling going on and very little in the way of actual governance uh, this morning i looked at one of these websites that was established almost immediately after the election to monitor the 100 days program and i found that you know it's almost 3 years since the 100 days program was uh, was introduced and uh, there is still a lot of work left to be done on that manifesto uh like your former mp you'd understand the amending the importance of amending the standing orders of parliament to give the oversight committees of parliament more teeth the introduction of a national audit bill which is now two and a half years being shuttled around from department to department in the government is this all smoke screens to hide the incapability of the government to fulfill its its own uh, manifesto well i wouldn't put it that way you must understand that the government went through important uh, bills through parliament and uh, they did several changes as you said the audit bill all those things have to come maybe it takes too much it, it has taken too much time but uh, we have to prevail upon them to bring it as quickly as possible it's not an easy exercise because you must understand but mr guru said it is becoming increasingly difficult to prevail upon the government to do anything i i didn't say that it is <coughs> it is difficult but you need to prevail upon the government this society has to prevail upon the government the media media has to play its role do you envision do you envision these pledges these pledges from 2015 uh coming to fruition any time in the near future cuz it has to people are people are prevailing upon the government people are calling on the it government it has to uh, it has the media to. civil society people are calling on the government it has to i mean on a daily basis almost you hear where is the national audit it has to it's 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 late i know but it has to because you have to understand that they have not said that they are not going to bring in all those things no they started it and they will definitely bring it i feel it will take time because there are so many discussions so many groups in parliament etc uh, which will keep on uh, adding so many amendments etc and that will delay the process but uh, it will see the light of day i feel you're a political veteran uh, in the devil mount lavinia area and uh, of course in parliament as well uh, how do you see this sort of almost sort of crisis within the united national party and uh, the targeting of the uh, of the targeting either justly or unjustly of the minister of justice vijay das rajpaksa incidentally a former member of your party well let me put it this way as you know this this style of governance has not been there of course during mrs bandar naik's time there were certain uh, you could say that there was something similar but this is a a combination of two major parties and invariably you will have problems i said that at the very outset that you're going to have problems because it's not that it's not that easy to for these two parties to get together and govern and govern it's not that easy and that is exactly what is what we are seeing if each person criticizing the other party intra party inter party both are bo- bo- both are taking place but it does not mean that we are heading for disaster i don't think we are heading for disaster everybody has to understand you will have problems but still you will have problems 
you will have to manage problems uh, mr so gunaratna do you think that you know when when mr gunasekar says we are not heading for a disaster do you think so no no i don't agree with that point because uh, uh, now it's it's a complex situation uh, the uh, good government uh, do you is think only that we are heading for a disaster but do you think that we are heading for a disaster now uh, i think the uh, the national government has come to a dead end now beyond that we have three more years left for the uh, this particular parliament and uh, until the fourth year uh, it, it's not it will not be dissolved so how to survive during this period is the core issue whether the two major parties come to an understand regarding the other issues like the economic issue the foreign relationships all those things are currently discussed between the two major parties without any understanding so that cannot survive so beyond this point either party to uh, should take the lead role and uh, continue the uh, i mean have a new form a new government i don't think that this particular uh, coalition will work mr gunasekara mix that has some point why because he says there is no direction let's take a look at the economy of the country at one point we knew that the prime minister of sri lanka was heading uh, the economy of the country he had the ccem appointed uh, he had charita ratwat appointed as uh, uh, and parskar lingam appointed uh, to um, uh, key positions in the C- within the ccem however now the president has appointed another commission on top of that who reports to him directly uh, the prime minister is also a member of that particular commission in question now you're trying to wonder who is really in charge of the country's economy and then you have members of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party going and meeting the business community which we saw the UNP doing at one point what is happening isn't this a disaster itself you know with all my years of experience in fairness to what uh, sabhi guna sector said uh, you have to understand um, politics is a different ball game altogether you will have problems you will have scuffles you will have allegations but they will still continue for one reason number one in 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 one sense i feel it's a strong government nobody wants to do away with a small strong, strong government nobody wants to do away not the prime minister not the president it is because of that reason i feel that they will some other move forward Mr. Gorsa, i see i see problems in one sense it's a I, strong government in i see i see i see problems if i, I totally agree with him Well, as far as the economy is concerned they, maybe people will say there is no direction but everybody needs to understand that if you try if you take the initiative you need to do the correct thing this is supposing you are going to appoint a committee it must be seen by everybody that it's a balanced committee you know a committee which can deliver you you don't if you see say my friends being appointed to a committee oh no you are giving a wrong signal Uh, you're giving a wrong signal so yeah. in that context i feel both the prime minister and the president if they understand that when appointing committees they need to have experts in the committee not buddies ah huh? not buddies you must have experts in the committee <coughs> then you can move forward uh, uh, mr gunath the interesting point uh, uh, mr gunasekar says uh, politics is a different ball game altogether i recollect uh, the statement that was uh, made by uh, south fonseca who was a general back then at the 2010 uh, presidential <coughs> polls i was there in the first um, media briefing uh, he said when he was questioned uh, how can he work with the united national party he said uh, there are no enemies <laughs> in politics and then he contested uh, individually independently uh, under uh his symbol at the 2015 presidential polls criticized the UNP the Sri Lanka Freedom Party uh, he even secured to fill a seat uh contesting under his symbol uh in the um, in Colombo or any part of the country and then you see him again <laughs> with the United National Party uh, as uh, the minister of land um now being a working committee member as well my question to you is very simple is politics a different ball game or is politics all about shamelessness <laughs> is it all about ensuring that they gain what they want it's that it's just shamelessness 
mean, with Mr. Minister Sarat Fonseca. I mean, what he, what, what the UA, he, he got full support from the UNP in the 2010 presidential election. And thereafter, he went out and he said, well, the UNP didn't back in. We, I mean, then we were working in the UNP and we went flat out uh, to see that he wins. And uh, then thereafter, he formed his own party. And after he formed his own party, as you said, I mean, he was running down all and sundry. <coughs> then subsequently, he found that a cropper. And then he returns back to the UNP. So, the UNP whom he criticized, who uh, he criticized the UNP after having uh, obtained the candidature in 2010, uh, has no shame. And then he, having criticized, gone his own way, failed, came to a dead end, he also came back. Yeah, now I want to bring attention to the statement that was made by former President Mahindra Rajapaksa. On the 4th of January 2016, he says, when he was questioned about his position in the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, he says, yes, I am a patron of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and I'm still uh, in the Sri Lanka Freedom, Freedom Party as a patron. If they are willing to get my advice, I am willing to give it mm. to the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. And a few weeks ago, he says, I have not resigned as the chairman of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. It's something to that effect. Now you're trying to wonder, what is the game that he's trying to play here? Maybe senile decay now. You come to that stage where he doesn't know what he's saying and whether he remembers what he's doing. No, because everyone, everyone in this country knows that he gave up the position of the president of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and he gave it to His Excellency Maitri Parasiri Sen. So now if he's saying that he has not done it, I mean it is, it is, uh, it is either he's forgetting, he's, he's having this, this is where he's forgetting and uh, he does not know what he's doing. I don't know, I can't remember, would those words be the words of the year? <laughs> uh, Mr. Gunnar, before we uh, go for a short commercial break, um, I want to drag your attention to what happened at the uh, FCID recently. Uh, we saw the statement that was issued by the youngest son of uh, the former president, um, saying that uh, no one knows uh, about uh, system, uh, space system uh, engineering. Uh, he's the only one who's qualified right now in Sri Lanka. You can't have a magnifying glass and try to uh, look at uh, look at a spacecraft or even even a satellite. That doesn't happen. When you heard this statement that was made by the younger son of the uh, former president, what was your thinking? Do you think that that is a way to get away from the problems? We saw that uh, uh, Sri Lanka was highly involved in in sending out a satellite. Uh, we had the Sri Lankan flag in the, that very big rocket that uh, went uh, to the space. Why can't the FCID really nab these individuals who are responsible? He said the same thing. He said, there was a Singaporean investor and I don't know who he is. No, uh, I, I feel the FCID and the, the <coughs> all those investigations lack any kind of political direction. It was it was done haphazardly. There was no interest. They they were they were just told to investigate. They were not given any direction. Uh, so therefore, I mean, nothing came out of it. Nothing has come out of it. I hope they say that there are more than hundred files which they have finished, and 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 uh, it's with the Attorney General's department. At least, at least for us to save our skins. And before the next election, if they can bring something out and you know prosecute some of these people and send them to prison, that will be that will be some saving grace for us. Uh, Mr. Gunasekar, there was contention. I, I just want to drag your attention to uh, the three sons of the former president. Uh, no offense to anyone, but to, just to bring to light again what was investigated at one point. There was contention over Nama Rajapaksa being uh, sitting in for the final exam of the law college, uh, him being separately isolated completely. Uh, the, the allegation was that, the thought was at that time, was that because he was the president's son, he needed security. So he could not sit for an exam amidst uh, all the other Sri Lankans uh, who were sitting for that particular exam in question. Then you have Ryoshita Rajapaksa, who is the second son of the former president, uh, who was uh, embroiled in a money laundering case. Uh, he was arrested and remanded. Uh, but the bottom line is, the state spent 19 million rupees for his training 
in Ukraine and London as a naval officer. And you try to wonder, there are so many allegations against the former president's family. We see even uh, the first lady, the former first lady being summoned over Vasim Tajuddin's murder case. So many cases, none. They have not been able to prove anything yet. There are only two things that come to my mind. Either they were really, really good in doing what they were doing, or B, that this government does not have the political will to do it. W what is it? I feel at the very outset the government should have realized that we have a scenario where politicians are involved in massive frauds, corruption, etc. Therefore, you cannot allow the normal law to take its course. You have to understand countries like us, we need special laws because we, you must understand these people are people who have privileges. Huh? They are people who have privileges. Now, if they are people who have privileges, then there must be special laws to prosecute them as well. But according that to is the one mistake. himself, uh, the, the Tilak Marapana, he had said that you can't establish uh, a special court yeah. to prosecute. Only with the, con uh, with the consent of the Chief Justice and the Attorney General can you go even for a trial at bar. Now the question is this. That is the present law. What I'm talking is something else. What I say is the onus is on the parliament to bring in new laws to prosecute politicians. Yeah? Because if you don't, if you don't, you're not going to see, you go, you're not going to see any of these uh, cases to a conclusion. Mr. Gundar, the, that is <laughs> that is no. Let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish. I I I I I am a firm believer that people are, who's enjoying privileges, huh, they mu there must be special laws to prosecute them if they do something wrong. If you don't bring in laws, nobody's going to catch them because they'll seek they seek cover under privileges, and that is exactly what has been happening. <laughs> happening right throughout. Uh, so you have yeah. to bring in. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a parliament that has to we, decide. We, we, we saw something of this <coughs> happening with the VAT fraud case. Two years trial at bar, case done and dusted. You wait for the parliament to formulate laws, it will take years and years. You have a national audit bill that, can't, that is just gaining dust I'll give you, at I'll the Prime Minister's office. I'll give you a simple example. Can exam you really expect justice from the parliament? I, I will give you a simple example. During Mrs. Bandar Nayaka's time, she moved in for special presidential commission with regard to allegations uh, pertaining to exchange control frauds. That was done. Within one and a half years, everything was completed. We need to understand that the onus is on parliament. Huh? The onus is on parliament to bring in such laws. Mr. Gurat, the, the onus is on parliament, understood. Uh, parliament formulates laws. But can you expect something like that from no. a Sri Lankan no. parliament? No, no, you can't. And why, why do you say so? No, because one thing is the present legal system has all the wherewithal to have a fair trial, try anyone and give a verdict. As you very correctly said, there is no political will. That's a simple, simple answer. There was no political will from the time this government commenced to bring this, bring any of the crooks to courts and bring them to book. That is the that is the bottom line. Mr. Gurunath, it's very interesting that you say that because the person at the at the centre of this, uh, Minister Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa, I recall gained a reputation in the mid 2000s as being a crusader, an anti-corruption crusader, as the chairman of Corp. Uh, is a prominent magazine that named him Sri Lankan of the Year in 2007. <coughs> and after all that, after being labelled a crusader against corruption, he's now being accused of stalling investigations into corruption. What does that tell you? No, as, as I said nothing before, I mean, if he has the ability to stall, invest, uh, stall the cases being filed, I mean, I, I can't see how he would have stalled the investigations because the investigations come under the police department. So I, I, I don't think he had any kind of uh, influence over there. But uh, when it comes to the justice ministry and the AGIS department, 
well if someone is saying that he has he has uh, influenced or he has uh, used his power to stop it there well that is a very sad indictment on the so why department. has the entire UNP parliamentary group banded together against uh, that's what I said previously he, they, they are up to something and they may be wanting Vijaydas Rajapaksa out for some other reason so that's why this whole group has got together and caused a storm in a teacup Mr. Apeguna, then I have a question for you. Um, what action do you think will win public support for the President and the Prime Minister over this uh, issue with Mr. Uh, Minister uh, Rajapaksa? Sacking, uh, one option is sacking the Minister, then the other be to take over the Ministry of Justice, uh, or not take any action at all. Oh, okay, there's another option, appoint a Ministerial Committee or something to buy time. <laughs> Well, it's a complex issue right now because uh, I don't think uh, uh, there's a firm case against Vijay, uh, Minister Vijayadasa Rajapaksa regarding postponing the uh, investigations. I, I'm not a legal uh, sector uh, knowledgeable person, but I believe it's lack of professionalism of the investigators that has retarded the process. But I'm not sure whether they can't even file a proper law. Indictments can't even issued by the Attorney General's Department properly. We saw uh, former President Secretary Lalit Virthinger's case. Indictments filed wrong. Former Minister Basil mm -hmm. Rajpaksa. Rajpaksa's case. Indictments filed wrong. The Avangard case. Indictments filed wrong. What is happening? Yeah, that's that's actually that's a problem. Now I'm not sure whether intentionally the because of the political pressure they have done it or not. See, in countries like in countries like. But we are expecting the professionals to perform because this is an open uh, environment. Uh, so I was expecting the professionals to perform, and the investigation should happen in a proper way, and the uh, attorney general department taking proper actions because <coughs> this is the period where we can see that. Uh, least uh, influence of the politicians over the uh, judiciary. So I was expect expecting more from the professionals rather than the politicians because politicians, we were trying to introduce a new uh, elect uh, election system. As that did not happen, then <laughs> the same people are in the <laughs> parliament. So we cannot expect anything more from them. But I was expecting the freedom we got the because of the civil society strengths and the uh, not having a uh, one uh, party uh, government with this uh, within this setup i was expecting more from the professional see, see, Mr. 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 the question is very simple when you really look at this uh, government initially you were very happy that uh, certain sectors certain ministries are handled by professionals for example the minister of justice was handled by a president's council let's take canada for an example people always try to draw a parallel with the canadian parliament saying uh, the Minister of Construction is an engineer, the Minister of Education is a professor, so on and so forth. In Sri Lanka we had similar cases as well. However, these professionals have failed the people. Well, I am not discussing about the politicians, I was discussing about the officials and no, the bureaucracy. No, but still for all, the I Minister mean, of Justice I, I, I mean, is a professor's Irrespective counsel. of whatever the discipline, whatever the profession, whatever the occupation, I cannot expect anything from the politicians at this stage. Mr. Gurunatha, what are the options available for the President and the Prime Minister in this regard? When you say what are the options, uh, like uh, for what? Regarding w what would you like seeing them doing to address this situation? Over, mi over Minister uh, no, Vijay Dasra. I, I, I of course feel in this present government, still the President has credibility. If he is going to protect his credibility, then he will have to take action with regard to what is happening. Because this kind of, because what has happened is this, the President has given all economic activity to the Prime Minister and there, is a, there was a perception that the Prime, Mini, Prime Minister is an economic whiskey, that he can turn around the economy, which in these two years he has failed, it completely failed. So now it is a time where the, His Excellency the President will have to take tough decisions whether he is going to keep the CEO in charge of the economy. If he, if he, if he continues to do that, well then this is going to, uh, this is going to explode. If, uh, if at all it has already, it is starting to explode and it is starting to crack. 
So you so, would agree with this, with Mr. Gunasekhar's statement saying that we are not heading in for a disaster yet? No, no. We, we, we this is we are we are heading in for a, we have this this government has bought in some form of transparency. It has bought in some form of good governance. I'm not saying no. Everything is not bad, but when it comes to the economy, all factors have to move simultaneously. You can't have one or two moving and the other five, six, six, six regarding. So here, this is what is happening. The economy is is in a bad shape. We need to revive it. And I feel the Prime Minister has failed in his duties in reviving the economy. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. But uh, before we go in for a short commercial break, a very quick question to uh, Mr. Maitri Gunaratna. Uh, one of our viewers are sending a message across saying that uh, that you are wrong when you said that the Supreme Sat uh, FCI inquiry is well directed both professionally and strategically and not politically. Uh, do you believe that the FCID is doing a good job no. in terms of in terms of no. investigation? No. And what makes you say that? No, because they have they they have taken such a long time, and uh, I mean I don't think it takes long time to make an investigation because all the documentation is is available, right? Because now now for instance, uh, Samir, I have been a criminal lawyer for twenty seven years. I mean, if you if you if you find if you if you need to get someone, uh, you know, if he has robbed or if he has if there is some kind of theft, right? All you do is you go you investigate it. And then you say uh, under what uh, under what law it comes in. If it's public property, you put it under the public property act. You report facts to the to the to the magistrate, and then the magistrate, if the magistrate is satisfied, or if the police is satisfied with the evidence, you arrest the suspect and produce him before the magistrate. He is taken in and he is remanded. There is no bail unless it is given by the high court under exceptional circumstances. Right. So, I mean, it is so simple. When it is to the ordinary man, the police is extremely fast and expedient but when it come when it is to politicians and political dynasties and other people it is different this so is you are trying to say that the investigation needs to be expedited and ensure that those who are corrupt should be brought before the law no and and, and they, they should not be respecters of, respecters of persons i mean they they have given a job to investigate they should whoever it is they should be bring them before court as as fast as possible. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mike, for your thoughts as well. We now go for a short commercial break. When we come back, it's the third round. This is Face the Nation. Stay connected. Here we go. Welcome back. Uh, you're with Face the Nation. I start off uh, the uh, third round with uh, Mr. Kesarlal Gunasekhar, a former member of Parliament, General People's Freedom Alliance, also the former Deputy Mayor of the Devil Mountain Municipal Council. Uh, Mr. Gunasekhar, you are at the grassroots, you know the pulse of the people, uh, you uh, work and breathe the air of the citizens of Sri Lanka, uh, you know exactly what is going on in the grassroots. However, you say that uh, people have to brace themselves because this is good governance, it's important for them to understand that nothing comes overnight. question is very simple. Let's say there is an election. Uh, you're also dissatisfied. Tomorrow. No? You I'm also asking, dissatisfied. I'm asking a very, very simple question. Uh, me being dissatisfied, I'm just a minority here, so I, I'm not going to say whether I'm satisfied or dissatisfied with the way in which this government is acting. However, my question is very simple. Let's say there is an election tomorrow. Who is going to win? Which political party is going to reign supreme? It all depends on who is going to contest. What are the parties, if you tell me, what are the parties that are okay, going to let's, contest? Okay, let, 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 let's hypothetically put across a few parties. Okay. I don't want to say I don't know like a politician, so I'm just going to put some names in. Uh, let's say the United National Party is going to contest. Let's say the Sri Lanka Freedom Party is going to contest. Let's say a breakaway fraction from the Sri Lanka Freedom Party is also going to contest elections. And then you have the JVP, the JHU, uh, then you have the Sri Lanka Muslim Congress, all of them uh, contesting independently. Okay, then I'll ask you another question. Yes, please. You say the, you're, he has to answer that. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, sure, no, no, sure. no, no, I yeah, want okay. to find out. Okay, okay. I, I need to find it's out. It's like okay. a thesis. You ask the question. That is Mahindraj Paksa going to give leadership to that particular group, third party you mentioned? The way it looks like, yes. No, 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 no. I'm not asking. I'm asking you a very specific question. Is Mahindraj Paksa going to give leadership to that group? They have a political part right now, and they would definitely have. But he's not there. The elections. Uh, if he's not there, leadership. and if he doesn't give leadership, they're not going to get anything. No, no, very, sim very simple. No, very simple. No, very simple. My question is very simple to you. 
let's say that yeah. there is an election tomorrow. Yeah. Who is going to win the polls? Now you've been you've been in parliament, you've been in the councils, so who you must be understand the pulse of the people. Who is going to who is going to poll. gain victory? Who is going to win the elections? Now you can't say it, that it's it's the individuals who contest. People don't vote for people in Sri Lanka. They vote for political parties in Sri Lanka. So who would they vote for? It will be a split, all right. Three way or four way split. Who is going to reign supreme? They won't be supreme then, if it's a three or four way split. Who's somebody going to, is go, somebody might get. Ma, uh, who's going uh, to get the majority? Well, Mr. As, 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 as at present, <laughs> as at present, <laughs> say, no, I'm, so, I'm trying to figure as out. As Are present, you going to contest? As at present, if Honorable Mahindraj Paksa gives leadership, they will get more votes. But that is marginal. Right. And that isn't that because the people are dissatisfied the way in which this government is carrying out its duties. No. Why? I don't think so. Then why? It's not that. I feel, uh, you know, that today the media hype is such that uh, everything is brought to light. Mm -hmm. You have various channels coming, up, coming forward with issues, etc. Therefore, the people also... To some degree, I would say disillusion at times. It was not there during the previous regime where everybody was fundamentally on the same track. But Mr. So Mr. you still not answering my question. My answer is question very simple. If there is an election tomorrow, I told you. Who is going to win? I told you. A party that is. I have already told right, you. So the party that is going to be headed by President Mahindra Rajapaksa is going to marginally win the elections. Am marginally. I right? At that, at this juncture. And then you're saying if that people within this point, and and say whatever the date of the election, certain other things take place, then it's it'll the scenario will change, the equation will change. No, but but given the current current political standing right now, so you're saying that they will win the election. Yes. Marginally. But why are you saying that they will win the election? There is because I you you said I, I have my ear to the ground. So, so you think they'll win? With all because my years of experience. So is that because this government is headed for a disaster? No. Then what? I what? don't say so. Then why? You have to understand that in this country, the way people vote is not for what is right and wrong, huh? For heaven's sake, don't run away with the idea that when people vote, they vote for what is right and against wrong. No, it is not the case. Uh, what, what do they vote for? Because uh, they vote for, many, many of these people vote for what they can get, what they prefer to get, what, what, the, what the government or the party would do for them. That's their line. Nobody <coughs> thinks as to what is there for the country. I want to ask a question, Mr. Gunasek, before I move yeah. to Mr. Maitri Gunasek. Yeah. Uh, Gunaratna. Why do you think the people voted you in? Pe people voted you in. I don't think they voted me in because it was the mayor who was voted in. I was a deputy. But but no, you no. contest an election. I I know. So people me. didn't vote me in. It was the mayor. I would I would have been number one. No, I should have been number one if that is the case. But you were still a member of the council. That's that's because you you automatically select twenty nine people. No, okay, let's, let's, put the request aside. let's put the request for, 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 to the side uh, for, for, for temporarily. You are also a member of parliament. Yeah. You are voted in then. No, no, I came on the national list. Yeah, you, but you, you, <laughs> came, you came with the people's aspirations. You came with the task. Of course. And then you lost an election as well. Yeah. And why no, did it's you a, lose It's not a question of losing an election. Why did you lose get the, the I didn't get the proper number of votes, preference votes, that's all. So when you don't have the number of preferential votes, you're trying to say that people are elected to the council or even the parliament because they don't vote for the right and the wrong. They just vote for uh, the uh, agendas they too have in mind. That's very clear. Look at how many people have lost elections. Take the case of Rohana Begunasekar, a fantastic politician. What has happened to him? He's not even seen in the political arena. These are quality people. We have lost them. I can mention several names. This country has never ever gone after good people. Huh? No, 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 no. I don't say so. I don't. I don't think so. Okay, so I, I am going to. I'm going to. Can I? Can I? Yes, I'm add, add yes please. Yes. Now, uh, the percent 
government or the your time starts now by the way right okay. your time starts now uh, yeah. you can just no, no, the the, the uh, president maithripala sirisena has promised a change in the electoral system now no one is talking about that i think that is also very important as much as the audit bill because now the audit bill why it has taken or uh, why it is collecting dust is because if that comes into play people who have cheated or people who have robbed will be accountable and they can be charged that money so therefore the audit bill audit bill i don't think will see the light of day secondly now mr gunasekar has brought out a valid point where respectable educated people cannot come into parliament are not elected that is because of this electoral system this pr system is only tailored for people who have money who can spend money who can buy votes ill gotten money ill gotten money ill gotten money that's why that's why you, you they will not elect you right so therefore the need to change the electoral system is of great importance if this country is to go in the correct direction the, that is one reason then you you will be able to stop the corruption which is which is prevalent in the political or in the country today mm-hmm. because why politicians are corrupt to maintain a electorate like colombo it will cost anyone 2 to 3 million rupees in the minimum under this pr system what i'm saying is go back to the seat by seat system where if it is mr kesarlal gunasekar he is going to be responsible for the evil amount revenue that's all he will know everyone in that area if they like the people like him they will vote him right so that is the system we need and the other thing is today all races are completely divided why because of this political system one now it is either the muslim congress it's a tamil congress it's a singhala congress or the Sing- whatever the parties but the, what happens is it is all polarized they are going behind only those votes but whereas if you if you come back to the seat by seat system you take the devala devala uh, 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 the devala uh, uh, the, 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 the the electorate that electorate will have muslims tamils singhalese christians you will be you will have to develop the ability to work with all of those communities you have to win you have to win to work with all of those communities then you will never get any kind of racial politics in this country you completely eradicate racial politics in this country take for instance in the good old days beruvala returned mr bakir mak kalambo central borella returned mr mh mohammed uh uh, uh this uh, uh, balangoda returned mr abusali these are predominantly single, single electorates but when you take balangoda they they defeated the ratwates they defeated the ratwates and they sent in uh, abusali who, who 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 was from the muslim community so that is the kind of Uh, uh inter religious inter uh, 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 with other communities that is the kind of uh, harmony which we have to cultivate so th- this president has promised that the electoral system will be changed and this is this is a this is a time this is the this is the opportunity for i mean as individuals we can bring this out but i think as a media you all should start a program where you get the people's opinion whether this should be changed or not uh, mr martha how old were you when you qualified as or took oaths as um, a lawyer 23 you were 23 years old so that makes you 50 years old because you said that you have 27 years of experience uh, as a criminal lawyer yeah. so just put in the equation right so at least you'll be 50 or above Thank so you. probably a very very well qualified to answer this question though you look young uh, at heart thank you thank and you. green <laughs> at heart <laughs> as well as a youth You know, I represent the youth. Uh, no, I don't. Think <laughs> <that>. <laughs> I you do can't tell me that. <laughs> so the youth fall in the category of uh, 20, uh, 20 and, and 18 I mean, and 40. I didn't even able to run away with that, but not you. <laughs> so the youth, uh, Mr. Gunratnam, what 
kind of expectations would they have when this new electoral system comes into play? See, no, you, you mentioned, you mentioned no, no, a few no, no. names. You said M.H. Mohammed, very old veteran politician. Yeah. You said Imtiaz Market Marker, lost a few elections, but again, a veteran uh, in the field. You said about Abu Salih, again, veterans uh, in the political sphere of Sri Lanka. Where is the youth position in this equation? No, now? no. The, you, it is very simple. We'll say if, if a youth wants to contest a, 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 a local government election, a local government election, he will have three Grama Sevaka divisions or thousand houses. So he, if he wants to, if he wants to, if he wants to win that uh, ward, he has to visit thousand houses and canvas his vote from these thousand houses, right? Whereas in today's context, you have to spend. If it is Colombo, you have to run the whole Colombo Municipal Council. That is not going to be an easy thing for a youth. So that's why you don't get young people coming into politics unless unless it is a politician's son because they have all the father's backing, father's patronage, father's, father's money. Wealth. Fa <laughs> that's wealth. Right? So they can come and, and it has always been happening if the father is in the parliament. But the there has to be youth representation in parliament as well. I recollect at the age of 27, uh, the now uh, prime minister was the deputy minister of um, education. Uh, so... The youth representation is important and imperative, isn't it? Yeah, but, but the, the, the present Prime Minister came under the seat-by-seat -seat basis. So, when, 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 in, in 1977. So, that is where the youth, that, that's how the youth, that, that's how they came in, because, because now if... The, yeah, but in 1977, uh, Mr. Gunrath, even if, uh, even if, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't want to use the name, but <laughs> even if anyone contested an election, they would have won it <laughs> under the UNP no, ticket. But, no, but still, still then, still then... <laughs> Till then, if a candidate was offered from a certain electorate, it, I mean, that's not the best example that you can draw. <laughs> no, no, but, but, but you are the one who bought it. <laughs> you are the one who bought it. But what I'm saying but is, he was appointed as a as a minister in '83. Uh, no, 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 but but what I'm saying is, if uh, if under the under the seat by seat basis, if you go back to that, as promised by His Excellency, then there is going to be enough and more opportunities for youth to come in and join the political mainstream. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Maitri Gunaratna. Now I want to move attention to Mr. Asoka Bikunwala, Chairman, CEO of the Strategic Enterprise Management Agency. Uh, Mr. Bikunwala, your agency has been in operation for many, many years. But the question is very simple. Since this government came into play, what sort of work has your agency done? Have you all been able to be a pillar uh, or a backbone to support the policies because you all are po a policy formulating body at the end of the day. Have you been ab successfully able, I, I see, uh, I, when I visited uh, some time ago your office, uh, I saw a huge uh, picture of the president uh, right behind you. And now I'm trying to wonder whether you are a president's man or not, but then again, all state institutions have that. So my question is very simple, have the government been able to take your advice? Well, actually, uh, uh, to explain the setup of uh, Strategic Enterprise Management Agency, which is part of the Presidential Secretariat, established under uh, uh, President's decree, to oversee 20 state-owned enterprises. This was formed during the uh, Chandrika Bandaranaike regime, where there was an agitation. Uh, I mean, there was a move by the World Bank to privatize it. And during that particular period, the UNP was governing the country. And uh, there was agitation against that. So uh, the uh, president decided during that time that uh, to keep it state-owned still to make it uh, financially viable, uh, viable uh, sustainable entity uh, to give the long-term directions. That's the purpose of the establishment of Strategic Enterprise Management Agency. We have 20 such enterprises. But during the uh, former president's period, actually, uh, the process was uh, not uh, implemented to that far because uh, the president uh, directly worked with the uh, secretaries of the ministries. Prior to that, uh, they want uh, the former uh, mm -hmm. uh, president uh, Chandrika Bandaranaike. She wanted uh, to get rid of political influences. That's why she wanted to make it a different entity. But during the uh, former uh, president's period, uh, he worked directly with the ministry. So therefore. The strategic enterprise management agency had a. Uh, so you say SEMA was established basically by Chandrika Bandar and Kumartunga to ensure that the World Bank does not intervene to privatize Sri Lankan entities. No, no, no. Uh, 
Now, there's an there's an issue because the state-owned enterprises are uh, running at a loss. It's a burden to the uh, treasury. people, treasury. So, uh, to improve the performances without privatizing, to keep it as state-owned, that's the uh, policy. Uh, Understood. During, right. Okay. Now, now Mr. Abhigun, the private-public partnership, as this government calls the Hamantara Port. What is the view of SEMA on this? Yeah. Now, now, I, now, let me explain what's happening during this particular... No, I, I just want to know about the Hamanda yeah. report. Uh, if you try to explain <laughs> about all the others, we are going to lose time. No, no, no so just, explain uh, just, about to, just to, uh, just to give report, a brief uh, uh, intervention. Now, the situation is complex because there are other ministries and agencies to uh, direct, give long-term uh, 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 directions to the okay. same institutions. Hamanda report now. Hamanda yeah. report, yes. No, yeah, <laughs> let's pick up that. Now... Uh, because of that reason, now there are different entities given di different things. So, from the strategic enterprise management point of view, we were critical on certain things, mainly because uh, we, I mean, uh, we feel that uh, we are in a transition from from industrial era to sustainable era. So, we do, we need to have a different uh, sustainable development model altogether. So, within that context, if you look at the what's happening in the uh, the Hambantota port case now. Uh, what I feel is, it's the uh, the position of the current uh, uh, government is not that different from the previous government because they were uh, eyeing that uh, we are closer to uh, shipping route right. and whether we can uh, entertain few of those ships uh, to provide services and get maximum benefit out of it. Uh, looking at the ge uh, ge 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 uh, geographic location, but I believe. Uh, that was a strong strategy altogether because now uh, in the long run, uh, these, uh, if we are to feed the uh, ships, then we don't have oil reserves here. We, we, we on, will be on behind here. Are you in favor of, Ch the Ch of China taking control of the Hamadar port? Yes or no? Now, uh, let, me, let me explain my stand on this. Now, irrespective of whether we are getting a loan and developing it or having a, a partnership with uh, China with major share going to uh, that particular uh, uh, company mm -hmm. uh, belonging to uh, China. I don't think there's a significant difference between these right. two. Now because because yes. Yeah. yeah. I understand what you're saying, yeah. uh, Mr. Gunawadhan. You say that uh, whether it's a PPP or with the Sri Lankan country, it doesn't matter. But you are well, very well aware that the contention over the Minister of Justice came to being on this Hambanta report in question. So now you try to defend him as well at one point. Uh, Mr. Vijay Rajapaksa, you're saying that um, he's right, uh, he's taking the right stand and so on and so forth. And then now you're saying that the PPP is okay to go ahead. No, 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 no. I didn't say so. I, what I what said I was that the, uh, the stand of the previous government, current government is the same, more or less. That's the only point I was saying, right. but I am against both. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, so you mean to say that you well, are in agreement well, well, with... If, if, we, if we do not have enough capital to generate uh, uh, revenue out of it to pay, we should not... Uh, right. Hold on to it. Yeah. Right. Mr. Abhigun, it's very simple. Um, you represent a government policy body. Am I correct? Uh, I, I am uh, yeah, I'm partly. Yeah, because yes, we, yes, we, partly. we are giving certain Absolutely. policy, uh, policy uh, directives proposals for. to the government. So yeah. when an individual like you are against a PPP um, of the Hambantha report, isn't that a bit contradictory from the government policy itself? No, uh, that's what I'm saying. That Within the government, there are different opinions on this matter, right? So, uh, my point was that actually now uh, further further investing on this and getting, uh, I mean, it, uh, if you are getting uh, the, if you are offering this to China, then then uh, it, it will be a complex situation because then we need to offer something to in India as well. So, that leads to a uh, much more uh, uh, critical situation than it's what's here right now. So, I think I think they are on the wrong track altogether. So, but, Mr. Uh, Mr. in respect of my, so my you would opinion. Agree. So, you would agree if I say... The parliament is split, the government is split, and even the government officers are split. No question about that, because <laughs> we have different uh, viewpoints on this matter. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Abhigunar. So, I, I open the floor for questions. Uh, let's start off with uh, Charita. Yeah, um, Mr. Gurathi, you mentioned about uh, the economy, uh, the fact that the Prime Minister has failed to turn around the economy. 
the setting up of the NEC um, by the president, initiated by the president, how do you think uh, this new institution or, or new setup could change uh, the direction of the economy? Do you think, because w w from what I see, there, there are more layers coming on? Yeah. No, there's going to be more red tape, I, I agree. But I think uh, uh, there was this economic council or whatever which came under the Prime Minister. And uh, uh, time and time again they were making serious mistakes with regard to uh, handling of various, various economic issues. So I think it was, the time was right that the President took it over and uh, gave it some kind of direction because uh, for the last two, two and a half years to three years, uh, the economy has not progressed very much. So I think, I think that it's at the right time that the President has taken it. And for instance, I'm just giving an example, uh, now say the Central Bank. There was a huge issue in the Central Bank when Mr. Arujanamandran was the governor of that place. Right? And then his term, his term was to end. And uh, he, there was various people lobbying for him to be reappointed. But the President took a fir firm decision and he rejected that request and he appointed Mr. Kumarasam. But you see, after having appointed Mr. Kumarasamy, the central bank is functioning extremely well. There is no allegation of any corruption. Things are moving quite well. So I would say time is right that the president takes more control. The president cracks the whip and gets this thing moving. Because people have placed their confidence in him. And he is the person who has to deliver. So he has now three years or two years more till 2020. And it's ample time, ample time for him to deliver. He can, he can do it. He should take the initiative and go ahead. Mr. Guru Ratna, there's a slight contradiction between this, this whole thing of asking the president to be the one who cracks the whip. Because uh, the entire, almost the entire common candidacy of President Maitripala Sirisena was predicated upon this notion that was predicated upon this notion that he would not exercise or would not um, exercise the executive powers to its fullest ex as it is in its fullest extent, that he would cut back on executive powers, yeah. empower parliament to act instead. Yeah. But now you're asking him, having campaigned on that foundation, on that uh, manifesto yeah. of cutting back on executive powers, you're now saying that the president needs to exercise more executive powers. No, no, no. he. In, in fairness, having assumed the uh, post of position of the president of this country, m m most of his powers of appointing various uh, people to various organizations have been completely curtailed by the 19th Amendment. So, the, the, the executive, truly executive president we had some time ago is today not the same person, he is a person with less powers. But but still, he is the executive president. The, the whole system has not been changed because you cannot change the system unless you, have to go, unless you go for a referendum. So he still has certain powers. What I am saying is, on the 8th of January 2015, people gave him the mandate for him to bring this good governance into play and to develop the economy. So it is up to him to see that the mandate is achieved or he, he works towards achieving the mandate. I feel he has given the UNP, the Prime Minister, two and a half years, three years for him, them to get the act together. But unfortunately they have but not. But the UNP also, as the largest party in yeah. Parliament, yeah. the UNP can also argue that hey, we have a mandate too. How can they uh, how can they argue that they have a mandate in the in the parliamentary election? Because they held, held the no, 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 presidential let, let, let election, and then they no, went no, no, on no, no. to the uh, parliamentary party. election, which was concluded in in August 2015. UNP did not get a mandate. UNP did not get a mandate. If not for the president giving 15 or 20 uh, SLFP MPs to form the national government, the UNP would have been in the in the opposition. But so don't you, you think they that have the no, UNP they have no clear mandate. Don't you think that the UNP's party structure, the organizers, etc., played an instrumental role in Maitripala Sirisena's victory? No, no, no. Not only the UNP, but, 
by 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 uh, the end of 2014 all people in this country wanted a change no one wanted this country to walk, march towards a dictatorship so it is not only the UNP, UNP played, a, played a major role I, I don't say no right but civil society individuals it is at a point like that that the people can come and by casting their vote make a change in the country and it is the people of this country who made that change. Mr. Abegunwadana, your appointing authority is the president. Uh, the, if I'm not mistaken, SEMA falls under the Ministry of Finance. No, it's now under the, it's now under the presidential secretary. secretary. Uh, I recall recently we had uh, some time ago one of the directors at SEMA on uh, this program and he was on Face the Nation and he was telling us about uh, and he was telling us about uh, the various pilot projects that SEMA has undertaken. Uh, one of these really caught my interest. It was the introduction of uh, electronic uh, payment of bus fares. Uh, he said that the pilot project is already underway. Uh, what progress has been has there been on that front? Yeah, uh, one of the initiatives of our uh, agency was to uh, uh, come up with a new concept uh, for uh, relief in uh, getting relief from the existing uh, traffic congestion. Uh, where we find a new tool that uh, the currently the system is uh, uh, the public uh, transport service is. Uh, uh, not in a favorable position because of the competition among buses. So that's why we introduced this new tool of pooling the uh, income and then redistributing among the buses. That for that purpose, we introduced this electronic card, for which uh, we uh, uh, we got the uh, concept right and then we conducted a pilot project in. Uh, and the pilot project has been completed. Yeah, yeah. Now during that period, we learn a lot. Uh, what are the issues we saw, uh, that need to be resolved. So we have completed that and we completed the pilot project uh, July 31st and we Why submitted the uh, report uh, both to the President and the Minister of Transport. So we, we suggested uh, uh, to uh, get the cabinet decision for two items. Firstly, to strengthen the public transport system by strengthening the uh, but I was looking at the CTB cabinet decisions over the past couple of weeks. There hasn't, there still hasn't been a cabinet decision. No, no, it's still this. under discussion because we have completed the report and submitted it uh, uh, just uh, at the beginning of this month, and now it's under discussion. Uh, last week we okay. had an interaction. Uh, let, let, let me let me f uh, place the question this way: the question that I'm getting to. How many such projects has SEMA completed? in the past two years yeah now uh, and how and how and on how many of those completed projects has action then been taken by the government yeah our first initiative was this uh, was this toxin free nation program we are to move away from uh, chemicals to uh, nature farming for which we uh, established the pol uh, policy and then conducted the pilot projects and then after completing the pilot projects now we are we are in the process of handovering that program to the ministry of agriculture because uh, they were not in agreement earlier because uh, because of the uncertainties they had but we as we proved the point that uh, we can get the same harvest uh, mainly in the paddy sector and now uh, we are training the uh, extension officers and uh, the Mr. Abegun, our this, time this is short, so that will be keep uh, it very sus the the time is limited yeah. so you're going to have to keep it very short how many projects uh, has has the government taken action on now uh, we we have we had two main projects that's the agriculture program and the uh, uh, transport project and the agriculture program it's already implementing so two, and two, it's, it's two out of how many no, no. Now, uh, our intention was to these two, and in addition, we were we were uh, giving some policy directions for the electricity sector, uh, for the uh, the uh, power generation side. We, we have provided our inputs uh, to the government, but uh, beyond that, uh, we have not. Well, I'll uh, make this question very simple, Mr. Yeah. As the managing director and chairman of the Strategic Enterprise Management Agency, do you feel that your input is getting a fair voice? within the government. Uh, as do you as feel that your, that your input is being heard? Do you feel that it's being turned into any kind of concrete action? Well, we had the freedom to uh, implement the pilot projects. To, a, to that extent, uh, we pilot tested that proved. And uh, now 
the uh, in the agriculture program uh, the ministry of agriculture uh, the minister has ta is taking the lead role so there's no question uh, once it's proved during this uh, maha season it will be mainstream during the next year that will happen anyway the transport project is little bit complex because there are other initiatives to have electrification of uh, the uh, transport system and all the other issues so there uh, we have to wait and see whether our pilot project uh, will be uh, mainstream during this Mr. Year. Mr. Kuratan, very quickly you don't envisage this to come after 3 years from now right <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We have we have, we have completed our uh, role now. Now it's it's the pro it's 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 the time for the government to mention. Yeah, there you go. My question is very simple. So you mean to say that you don't envisage this to come in three years' time? The cabinet knowing what they do are what they're doing right now. But you but never I, know whether it will come after three years. No, I, I'm not sure. I think uh, the the issue we were discussing uh, earlier. I mean, what are the options for the next three years? So I believe. Uh, the uh, this uh, this national government will not survive that's my stand either a unp government or a uh, slfp led, uh, led government will if govern the, the next 3 years so survive, so depending on which government what does it mean for your for your position and seva I mean that depending on what that's the government to form. <laughs> that's, that's a personal <laughs> question uh, so let's go to uh, mr gunasekara uh, mr gunasekara Interesting thoughts, you know. Um, my, my question to Mr. Uh, Mr. Abhigunwardham was very simple. This government will not be able to think about a future. Uh, let's talk about the bus tickets or even the waste management or whatever it is. They'll be too busy in the next three years to survive and move forward and contest another election. Won't it be the case? Do you think that they would be doing all this waste management, yeah, uh, what the same the says, and all that? The government is still go on till 2020. Then, so you said you said the government is going to go on. You so said it just now. <laughs> but we I, said, I said next three years. Citizen, based on do you really want country, to see a government continue that way, where it's all political wrangling and no governance? No, but, but, but the thing is, you can't you dissolve a parliament based on the that country's way, so member of the constitution until the year 2020. It has to go on. So yes. I am basing my question completely on the constitution of the country. There are so many issues that are that have surface. It's not that easy to run this administration, but I feel this administration has to be protected for the simple reason the alternative is worse. What That's is the alternative? Whatever the alternative that you have, anybody has. So the you're alternative saying any worse. other alternative is worse? Any than other worse. alternative is going to be worse. You're, you're just That's putting my uh, you're That's just my going, You're just throwing Mr. Ma Maitri Gunratna's <laughs> chances of contesting <laughs> an election, <laughs> Mr. Gunratna. <laughs> And even your future. No, the question is this. We have to understand that... I thought you were the alternative. No, no. Uh, for the the no, the question of, is very simple. No, the question is very simple. We need to understand things are not easy. Things are extremely difficult. There have been intra-party allegations, intra-party allegations. All those things will happen. But still, they will move forward. There will be problems. There will be hiccups. Always. There be, who knows? There could be worse things happening. But... You must understand that this is as a result of good governance. Huh? All these things are happening in the name of good governance. Mr. Guru, Mr. Guru, Mr. Guru at the end of the day, I'm not sure whether they are disillusioned or whether they are motivated. No, no, no. <laughs> in my case, I have absolutely no disillusionment whatsoever. I read this very well. Only thing is, I, I ask this question: Are others going to wait? That's the question. Are others, are others going to wait? To wait? Mr. Gunaratna, let's take you for an example. Uh, one thing is for sure, uh, Mr. Gunasekar is of the opinion that any alternative that's going to come into play is going to be the worst alternative for the country. Uh, do you agree so? And, no, and do you believe that's I going don't. to... There can be better alternatives. There can always be leadership. No, no. In the horizon, there, can there is no other alternative. Well, let's no, right. you, cannot, you, cannot, uh, you cannot predict that, you can cannot you? Predict uh, that. Uh, well, let, let's say I thought you asked me to predict no, I, I asked you to come, but you can't. Election. No, no, but Mr. Mr. Gunasekar, you don't get the point. Let's take, let's take the world for an example. Let's take the world for an example. Okay, let's take the world for an example. Let's take the United States of America for an example. Yeah. I always bring out this example. You never thought Donald Trump is going to contest an election. No, it was the latter part. I realized he was going to win. Yeah, so he won the election. Yeah, he won the election. Let's talk about Justin Trudeau's appointment. Yeah. Uh, the Prime Minister. No one thought he's going to do it, but he made it. Let's take France for an example. The new uh, president. No one thought he's going to make it, but he did it. Let's take Brexit for an example. No one thought 
I'm sure the UK is going to vote out of Brexit. Yes. But they did it. But they Let's take Sri Lanka for an example. No one thought that President Maitri Palasirisen is going to win, but he yeah. did it. No, but the and we always had an alternative. And that alternative is better or the worst, people have to adopt. No, the question and is, agree and move you forward. have to understand, you must see a person in the horizon. You don't have to. That's no, my no, point. No, 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 no. I don't agree. Now, when... when you when, have to see a person when, in the when, horizon. In 2014, there was no one in the horizon. But events put forward men. When, when, when President Mahindra Rajapaksa decided to go for a for the third, second or third, third, third term, point, yes. third term, right, then someone uh, suffers. Someone suffers. So what I'm saying is, if you if you want to make a change, and tomorrow you decide to take make the change, then from day after tomorrow things things can get better. I'm I'm a firm so believer. Sir, don't you think so? Because the man who firm ate believe. hoppers in the night and agreed uh, for an extension goes and joins another political party and guess what? He wins an election. <laughs> that because and now it seems that you're in his side as well. Uh, this is what I'm gauging, but I, I, I don't know. But no, uh, no, yeah. funda Fundamentally, I feel that is because the UNP accepted him. No, you you right, right had no one, to, no one to put forward as a candidate. If it was anybody else and the UNP was not willing to accept here in this situation, the UNP accepted him very well from day one. So, I, I think you can see example of Sri Lanka. Do you recollect the 1994 elections? Yeah. Um, you know uh, who was Chandrika Bandara and Kumar Tunga's uh, yes. opposing candidate. Yes. Do you re recollect? Uh, yes, of course. So, no one thought she is going to contest. Did, did, did they? But there was al always an alternative. Uh, let's take Sri Lanka's 2010 presidential elections. No one thought Sarath Fonseca would be the common candidate. He went behind bars. Uh, for uh, for vying for a political seat while uh, serving as the army commander. Again, trumped up charges according to uh, the former uh, army commander. But there was no one in the horizon. Sri Lanka adopted, forged ahead, moved forward, and there was change. Isn't it, Mr. Gunasekara? No, the question with regard to Sarath Fonseca's first uh, action as far as the contesting of the elections, I feel that was a mistake. That there was an alternative. You may say so. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for your thoughts in the first, second, third, uh, uh, and fourth rounds. We now we have a short commercial break. Uh, what needs to be understood at the end of the day is uh, there is always someone who would rise. There is always someone who would take up a position and then say, "Okay, I'm willing to run." Whether he's going to do the job and complete the task is a question mark. But there's always an alternative. We're going for a short commercial break. When we come back, uh, it's the final round of Face the Nation.